Today we have the integral from 0 to infinity of log 1 on x over 1 plus x squared squared. So here we just have e involved in it, kind of, because of the logarithm. But the answer happens to have pi, which is pretty crazy. Honestly, this happens quite a lot in integration. Okay, so we have a few options. We're going to let x equal tan theta, and that's because of the 1 plus x squared in the denominator. We could also have done a 1 on x substitution because of the bounds, but this happens to be nicer. Okay, so let's replace the x's with tans, and the denominator will become sec squared squared. And dx would just be what? The derivative of tan, which is sec squared. Right, so now we can just simplify this. Firstly, the bounds would become 0 to pi on 2, because the inverse tan of infinity approaches pi on 2. That was a bad notation, but it is what it is. Um, now what? Well, we can rewrite it as so and cancel some stuff. We're just going to get log tan times cos squared. Right, so what do we do now? Well, cos squared is not that good. We could write it as this in a much better form. And now we can split up the integral. Okay, yeah, so all we did there was just double angle, by the way. Cos squared can be written as half times 1 plus cos 2 theta. And now that we've split it up, we'll look at this first integral that we have. It's the integral of log tan, and we can actually do king's rule on this, because the bounds are 0 to something, that's usually a good indication for king's rule. Tan pi on 2 minus theta is just cot theta, right? So cot theta is 1 on tan theta, and when you have log 1 on something, it's just a log of that something, but with a negative sign. So this integral is equal to its own negative. That means it has to be zero, so that's pretty good. We just got rid of a full integral. Now we have this left. Okay, we could try King's Rule again and see what happens. If we do King's Rule, we get cot theta in here, and this would become cos pi minus 2 theta. Yeah. Now, cos pi minus 2 theta is minus cos 2 theta, and log cot is minus log tan, right? Yeah. Okay, wait, King's Rule didn't do anything. So that means the integral is symmetric about the midpoint. So it's actually twice the integral from 0 to pi on 4. If you want to know why that kind of works, I have a video on this. Check it out in the description. Now we could do integration by parts. Yeah, okay. So we're going to integrate the cos 2 theta and keep the log and differentiate it. So keep the log uh, and integrate the cos 2 theta would be a half sine 2 theta. And we have to minus the integral. Well, we have a minus sign. So it will be plus the integral from 0 to pi on 4 of... Uh, okay, so we just transfer this half sine 2 theta. And we transfer the log, but when we transfer it, it becomes uh, the derivative, actually. So it would be 1 on tan theta times sec squared theta, d theta. Okay, so we have this thing to evaluate. We have something to evaluate, and we also have an integral to evaluate. Um, okay, so when we sub in pi on 4, we get tan pi on 4, and we get sine pi on 2, which is 1. And a log 1 is just 0, so okay, that first term is nice. The next term, we probably should do a limit, though. The limit as x goes to 0 from above, or from the right side, I guess, of log tan x times half sine 2x. Uh, okay, yeah, this is... My, we might have to do L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so when we sub in 0, or when you just put in 0 blindly, we get log 0 times 0. Log 0 is minus infinity, and sine 0 is just 0. Minus infinity times 0 is not a is an indeterminate form, so we can't really conclude anything from that. We have to do some more work. Uh, okay, maybe we write this as log tan over 1 on sine 2x. That's the same thing, right? But now the both... Um, but now numerator and denominator both go to infinity, kind of, or plus minus infinity. And that's a good indication to do L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule is just when you differentiate the numerator and denominator. So the denominator was cosec 2x, but when we differentiate it, it'll become negative 2 cosec 2x cot 2x. Okay, so we've differentiated numerator and denominator. Now we just want to simplify, right? So this is 1 on cos squared. Okay, we have this. Uh, let's put it down here. Well, 2 sine x cos x is sine 2x. Oh, wait, okay. So these two will cancel out. We're just left with cot 2x in the denominator. And that's going to be negative tan 2x. Okay, so when you plug in 0, this is just going to give tan 0, which is 0. So all in all, this limit evaluates to 0. Okay, we've got a few zeros in this video. Now we just have this thing. Let's try to simplify this a bit. 
uh, sec squared we can write as 1 on cos theta cos theta. Sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta, right? And we have all of these. We can cancel out a few things. Cancel the sines. Cancel these two cosines. Okay, wait. Everything seems to cancel out. We're just left with the integral of 1. Wow, okay, that's pretty nice. So this is just going to give us pi on 4. And yeah, so there you go. The integral from 0 to infinity of log 1 on x over 1 plus x squared squared is pi on 4.